It's a beautiful day here in Virginia Beach. To be honest with you, whether you believe it or not, they actually forecasted for snow today. No snow. Instead, we just get this really cold rain. Fun fact, the more you get closer to the ocean, the less likely it is to snow. However, it is snowing inland. I wanted to go about four hours in to the Appalachian Mountains and go snowboarding today, but every single person I asked to go snowboarding with me had other things to do. Such is life, you know, when you're an adult. People thinking they have responsibilities and whatnot can't just pick up and go snowboarding for the day. Uh, that'll keep my the hair out of my face. All right, so here we have it. To be completely honest with you, this is not the box it came in. It came in a bag, but I threw away the bag when I got it earlier this week and then just pretended to pick it back up for the camera. So this is a shipment that I ordered a couple weeks ago from Banggood, I think it's called, .com. The website's not what you think. It is, it is a electronic component website that you can get stuff for really cheap. For example, here, we have a Wemos D1 Mini, a solderless breadboard, and a bunch of wiring. Oh, and not to mention the LCD screen, but you can't really see that just yet. Not too long ago, I saw this clock. It serves as a clock, and it can also serve as a YouTube subscriber counter, meaning if I set it up for my channel, it would tell me my exact subscriber count right now on the counter. And instead of paying $200 for that, I decided to order this for like 20 some odd dollars and build one myself. I looked into the Arduino and whatnot, but that's a little bit too much for what I need in terms of the capabilities plus the price. This hopefully will do what I needed to do. But for now, it's going back in the box. That will be the next episode or the episode after that. If you didn't know, this is episode two of my series, which is essentially documenting everything going on in 2019 that I feel is video worthy. And I think y'all will find this project to be very interesting. But for now, we're gonna keep it right there. Ugh. To be completely honest with you, and I hate to say this on the very first like episode of the series that isn't the introduction of the series, I did a very poor job of documenting this past week. Today is Sunday, but this is a Sunday before the Tuesday that this video goes out. And the main reason I'm telling you this is because it brings me back to work. As you know at work, I don't really film anything, mainly because I don't own the software, so I can't be showing you the code. But right now is a very interesting time because I'm transitioning from working on a lot of the in-house projects and some of the side projects that are coming in to a full-time contract. I am full-time working there, mind you, but there's a different contract that I'll be hopping on where instead of doing a lot of web development work and a lot of like, experimentation with different technologies, I'll be doing a lot of Java work, getting back to my roots and actually what I'm what I'm actually decent at. So I'm pretty excited to get into the whole Java route of things instead of doing this whole web development stuff that I've been doing for the past few months. And this past week being one of the more hectic ones. It's funny, I was talking about in my previous video of this series about how this is going to be my first year where I actually have a consistent schedule. In the very first, what I like to call real week of 2019, it was anything but consistent. I would get to work, it didn't really matter what time I got to work because I think three or four of the days this past week, I didn't get home until like 7 p.m. because I was just working. There's a site that I was working on that had a deadline this past week. So there wasn't a lot of development work outside of real work like I wanted to get done. So that's kind of why I didn't document a lot of what was going on because most of it was at work. And y'all are gonna love this. Let me, um, let me type in my password here. A lot of people, for some reason, get upset because I look at my keyboard when I type in my password. I don't understand that. The only thing I'd be able to look at on the screen are a bunch of dots, and there's no point in me looking at the dots going like this. Instead, I can make sure I get it right the first time and just look at the keyboard. I don't see the big deal. I think those people are suffering from something called Dunning-Kruger effect, but that's neither here nor there. Today, we're gonna to be talking about imposter syndrome. I don't know a single person who hasn't suffered from imposter syndrome as a software developer. And if you don't know what imposter syndrome means, it's essentially you get stuck in your mind like 
I'm not good enough for this job. Look at all these other people. And for me, it always happens when a transition period. So when I first got into college was one of them. And I would look at all these people and think, how did they already know how to code? Like, I feel like everyone was coding from the womb and me, I'm sitting here at 18, 19 years old and I'm coding essentially for the first time. But then once I started to program and kind of blocked out everyone else or maybe even try to get help from other people, I realized that we're kind of on the same level. You know, I tried to get up and I was able to do some of the work and they were able to do some of the work and I felt at least competent in coding some of those early pieces of work. However, the next time I encountered imposter syndrome was when I was applying for internship positions. There would be all these positions that had all these different skills laid out. And I'm trying to figure out how in the world is someone with two years of computer science degree experience, not like real world coding every single day experience, but college experience, supposed to know 10 languages and supposed to have this type of experience and know way more than any normal student would know even coming out of college just for an internship and I really was just nervous about that but I ended up applying either way and in all honesty a lot of those re job requirements on that were just fluff I don't know why they do it but half the things listed I just didn't even do ever didn't even touch and then the next transition period was from college into the workforce see for me I felt my resume was on point I had some good internships under my belt and then once I started this job I was going to have a computer science degree but even then plus I actually worked on my own iOS applications I had a few of those under my belt by the time I went into this and although I wasn't applying to iOS development jobs because there aren't many around where I live I still felt that that would add value but I still was like facing like, am I not good enough? Like, I feel like everyone else is way better and they would be more qualified because all of these things listed, I still feel like college and all my side work and my internships didn't prepare me for this. I thought people wanted workers to come in and just be able to type everything and boom, that's what they got. But in reality, at least in my situation, I was able to go into my job and the first few months and even now still is kind of like a mentorship. I don't know if that's what it's like at every company, but since I'm working at a startup and my boss is amazing, I am in a really good position where they don't expect me to come in and just be this expert level programmer. They understand this is my first year in the real job workforce. So if you're worried about all of these little different transition periods, just try to find something that'll fit you try to find something where the people understand that you're not going to be this five ten year experience level developer you're going to be first real job at full time in the workforce you may have had like me a whole year's worth of internship experience in the workforce but that's not the same or maybe it is and you're still worried about going into the workforce just know that i'm actually kind of facing imposter syndrome right now although java is my thing and I've been bringing up my GitHub account. I actually meant to bring up Exorcism as well. I've been working on Java. I showed you in a recent video. Ugh, I don't know how the exposure is doing on that camera there. Let me correct this. But I did a lot of work on my Java track on Exorcism where I did a lot of these different types of Java, Java programs. This one has to do with dates, integers, and time, games, loops, pattern matching strings, images loops, uh, bitwise operations, conditionals, cryptography, so on and so forth. That's really what I've been working on because I feel like I'm not going to be prepared coming into this, working in a team and being able to pull my weight. I'm really trying the best I can in order to pull my weight once I get into this, which would be in the next week, I think. I'll be full time like on this particular contract. And I'm just going through it again. So just know that <laughs> You may be going through it just like me when you enter college or just like me when you got your first internship, first job, so on and so forth. I'm just about a year in, what am I, maybe maybe more like eight, eight months in, and I'm still kind of feeling that and it's kind of it sucks. Imposter, imposter syndrome is just not fun. You just feel like you're a bad developer. And if you stumbled across this video because you thought I was going to essentially tell you how to get over the hump of imposter syndrome, I don't, I, I can't. I, I, in order to get over the hump, I just, I just did it. I just went through it. I don't even know if I got over the hump. I just kind of 
try to get in the groove of the job because I'm still facing it today. If I knew how to get over the hump, then I wouldn't be facing it right now, right? So essentially it's just move forward. If there are jobs out there that you try to apply for and you see all these requirements, just apply. I've given plenty of tips when it comes to how to go about applying to different internships and jobs. Just use that as long as nothing on your resume is, is lying. Just make sure you essentially cater your particular resume to that job listing. And if you have a basic knowledge of some of the things that they're listing on the resume, then list that, I mean listing on the job uh, listing, then list that on your resume. That's my best advice for it. I just, <laughs> I don't know how to get over the hump that is imposter syndrome because I'm still facing it today. <sighs> and that's that. <laughs> just know you're not alone, okay? Just know you're not alone because everyone goes through it. And before anyone tries to call me out, I just want to show you something real quick. And, and the reasoning why this graphics card back here isn't in the proper slot. It's supposed to have the little black piece similar to this right here over the prongs there, but it kind of broke off, which is why it's sitting in this one back here. See, that's what it's supposed to look like. That's what it does look like. So that's where it sits. I've actually reached out to a hardware company or two trying to see if they wanted to sponsor a video so I could finally upgrade this four to five year old PC. To put it in perspective, this is a fourth generation Intel core processor inside there. And that was the new one when I built this thing. And right now we're sitting at ninth generation. So what is that? Four to five years old PC. It still does what it needs to do, but it could do it better. That's kind of why I'm trying to get an upgrade of the PC. I know I will get one by the end of the year, whether I buy it or not. I just can't buy one right now. I'm too cheap for that. <laughs> and apparently I'm too cheap to record an outro. As you can see, I'm editing my video right here and I just realized I didn't record an outro. I was thinking I was gonna record something today for this video, but instead I record something today for next week's video. Next week's video is gonna be sick. Like, I, I have a lot in store, so just make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you found some something useful out of this video. Just know that imposter syndrome, if you're facing it, if you feel like you're not good enough, know that you're not alone, and just get better and try to prepare for whatever you have kind of coming up in your career. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time, have a good one. Peace.